Yep, welcome guys, welcome. Yeah, a couple more seats over there, come on in. So today we're gonna to be talking about the joiner. In my opinion, one of woodworking's most underutilized tools in the wood shop. Yes, they're great for milling up lumber, flattening surfaces, squaring up edges for glue ups, but in most shops, that's about where it stops for a joiner. But they are capable of so much more and I'm gonna show you a few extra tips and tricks that you can do with your joiner to utilize its maximum ability. First, we're gonna go over a few of the features and functions of the joiner. That way we can better understand how this thing operates. This is my new Grizzly G0858 parallelogram joiner. I know that's a mouthful. And what the heck is a parallelogram joiner? How far has your Herfindahl index declined since the merger? Nice try. How's your Pollock says what index? What? I'm gonna explain that first just to get that out of the way. Real quick, if you have no idea what a joiner is or what its function is, I'm going to go over a few of the main components and features. That way you can better understand what we're going to be talking about in the next few minutes. So this is called your in-feed table. This is your out-feed table. This is your fence. And this is your cutter head. That's where all the business happens, so keep these away from that. You should always have your cutter head guard locked in place and it's spring-loaded. That way it's always covering when you're not using it. Now back to that word parallelogram. So traditional joiners had a dovetail style mount from the bed to the body. That meant when you raised and lowered your in-feed and out-feed tables, it would actually drop the table further away from the cutter head. That reduces your accuracy, reduces the cleanness of the cut, and it's better to have the cutter head as close to the in-feed and out-feed tables as possible. So a parallelogram joiner, as you lower the in-feed and out-feed table, it doesn't change the distance from the cutter head to the table, no matter how far up or down you go. This particular cutter head is a helical cutter head. It has four rows of carbide inserts, totaling 36 inserts in all. Each insert has four sharp sides on it, so if something happens to one side of the insert, you can just rotate it to the next. On the back, you'll notice a few levers and knobs. This particular knob is the fence adjustment knob. It allows you to move the fence in and out depending on how wide of stock you're cutting. This is a fence tilt lock. If you turn that and undo your 90 degree stock, you're able to tilt your fence inward and out. And then you can also lower or raise your infeed table. You can see the scale here that goes up to a half inch. And we're also able to raise and lower the outfeed table with the same type of lever on the other side. You want your outfeed table height to be as close as possible to the highest point of your cutter head. You can see it barely moves this straight edge and that's what you're looking for. So now that we've got the main components and functions down pat, we're gonna go over the different ways you can use the joint. Our first method is called face joining. So you can see this is a rough cut piece of lumber. We're gonna run that over the cutter head face down. We'll make a few passes. You can see it's taken off material here. And as it passes over onto the outfeed table, it's nice and flat. After just a few passes, you'll see that the bottom of this board is no longer rough and it's perfectly flat and smooth. That cutter head does an amazing job at producing a nice smooth finish. Our second method is called edge jointing. It's where you would take your smooth face that you just created, put it up against the fence, and run the edge of the board over the cutter head. This is gonna create a perfectly 90 degree angle between the face and the edge. This is how you'll get that nice tight glue up between boards. Those are the two most popular techniques used on a jointer. This next one is called chamfering. This is where you'll tilt the fence to your desired angle, and then you're gonna run the board similar to how we did when we edge jointed, but it's gonna leave us a nice, beautiful chamfer on the side. I feel like this technique is almost a forgotten method. You don't really see people doing this very often anymore on a joiner, but you can see here it produces a super clean, nice chamfer on the edge of this board. We will be removing the guard for the next two methods, so please use caution when doing this. Next, we're gonna be creating a rabbit cut. This part of your infeed table that hangs off the front is called your rabbiting arm, and this is your rabbiting ledge, and these are both designed to create rabbit cuts. First, you're gonna adjust your fence to whatever depth you want your rabbit cut to be. Be. Then you're going to drop down your infeed table. I like to do it in three separate passes. So say I want a 3 8 deep rabbit, I'm going to do an eighth inch for each pass and then readjust every time until I get down to that 3 8 And you can see by the time we get done with that third pass, we have a nice, consistent, clean rabbit. And last but definitely not least, we're going to be tapering. So we're going to put a mark on all four sides at the halfway point of our taper. 
I want to create a half inch taper from one side to the other and we're going to do this in two passes. So I'm going to drop our infeed table down to a quarter inch and then run one side all the way to the halfway point and then you'll stop there. Again, the guard is removed, so be very careful. Go very slow on this because we are removing a quarter inch of material. Once we reach our halfway point, we're gonna stop and then we're gonna flip over our board to the next side and then we're just gonna keep repeating till we have all four sides done. Once we finish the fourth side, we're going to flip the board over end over end so that the higher point is now facing the cutter head. You wanna make sure to have a good amount of pressure on the back of the board so that the front is almost hovering in the very beginning and then you're gonna complete the pass all the way through the end and that's gonna give you your half inch taper by the time you get to the end of the board. And just like before, we're gonna repeat this until we have all four sides done. And you can see after you get through with this final fourth pass, you have a beautiful tapered leg that you created on the jointer. So there are five ways that you can utilize your jointer. Hopefully you guys learned something today or at least had a little bit of fun. I definitely had a lot of fun making this video. Anytime I get to come out to the shop and play with my tools, it's a good day. So if you guys did enjoy this, please hit that subscribe button so that you can support my channel and tune in next week because we're gonna have some awesome videos coming up each week. If you guys got any questions on anything you wanna see us do, just drop them in the comments below and I'll try to get to them.